Ni Hao, number one Great Wall Chef is back. Guys, guys, I am not racist. I had a Chinese boyfriend last year. Okay, let's get that straight. And I was craving uh, Chinese dumplings a few weeks ago after watching a food vlog. Kind of procrastinated because they're difficult to make. But here I am today against my better judgment to show you guys my version of traditional Chinese soup dumplings, which are made with pork, but we're going to use beef as well as high quality organic ingredients. And normally, I'll show you guys all the ingredients at the beginning, but I'm going to break this into several components. First, with the gelatin broth aka aspic that needs to be made a day or two in advance and there are four total components that broth the meat filling the dough for the dumplings and the dipping sauce now you're going to need a couple things you probably don't have lying around uh, excluding the beef this is just the top secret burger blend from frankie's strange meat i'm going to get this nice and brown in the pan it's going to add a lot of flavor however you need something with cartilage. Uh, these are beef tendons, which we also have available on Frankie's Free Range Meat. These are uh, really cost effective in adding that gelatinousness uh, to the soup or broth. Uh, you could also use like knuckle bones, but if you don't have enough of this in there, this isn't gonna work because we're gonna put it in the fridge later and it's gonna turn solid so that we can put it in the soup dumplings. Uh, maybe you could just buy packets of, of beef gelatin, although that's not nearly as high quality. Uh, and it's not going to add nearly as much flavor. It will still be gelatinous. And then our, our plant flavoring components, we have organic Chinese cooking wine. Uh, you might have to buy this online. I was just going to get like a regular organic white wine. It would probably turn out fine if you don't want to go with the Chinese route. Some ginger and scallions, uh, very Chinese flavors. So all we're going to do is trim the scallions. I guess you could peel the ginger. I'm just going to cut this in half because that's a little too much. We only need maybe half a cup of the wine and we're gonna pop this beef in the pan while I do the rest of the prep. Uh, so this pot has been blasting on high for quite a few minutes so that this gets nice and brown. And I'm gonna set off my smoke alarm. Holy shit. That is not good. So our pan was a little too hot, but that's good. We're getting some nice browning. So after that initial sear when you put the meat in the pan, the water is really gonna start coming out and we don't wanna kill this and overcook it too much. So we're just gonna deglaze it with the wine. And I'm gonna use about, I don't know, a cup of the Chinese cooking wine. Just make sure to scrape up the bottom of the pan. And we're gonna add everything. So we got our trimmed scallions and ginger cut up. I think one pound of beef tendons is plenty actually. Uh, two pounds is definitely overkill. And we're not doing three pounds, so that should be fine. So now I have some glass bottled mineral water and we're gonna to top this off. Now a lot of recipes usually use raw pork, so they'll take some raw pork bones and pork skin, uh, but you know, most pork is not high quality. And on Frankie's Hearing Meat, we do have actually some Iberico pork skin available, but no bones as of yet. So this is gonna simmer over the course of several hours. We want to infuse the flavors of all of these ingredients into the broth as well as physically reduce it so that it becomes like a very concentrated uh, gelatin structure. And I have it on a medium low heat. I'll probably check on it uh, three or four hours from now and uh, see how it's going. All right, so it's been maybe five or six hours and our broth has reduced drastically by more than half. And this might actually be a bit too low because uh, you can see we have maybe half an inch of fat on the top that has to be scraped off. And then after we strain out all of the solids, the tendons, the beef, there's going to be very, very little broth left. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just uh, take this off the heat and let it sit overnight. Let the flavors continue to meld into the broth. And then in the morning, uh, we're going to warm this up again if we have to. Strain out all of the solids, pop it in the fridge, and then hopefully uh, the next day we can scrape the fat off or not and then just use the gelatin in the soup broth. So our broth has been sitting overnight. You guys can see a lot of fat at the top, but it hasn't really solidified. The fat's still really soft. Uh, we can't uh, scrape it off that well. So we're gonna put this back on a very low heat and just kind of get everything melted as gently as possible so that uh, we can strain all of the uh, solids out and then uh, as I mentioned, we'll pop it in the fridge and then we should be able to get the fat off. All right, so the fat on the top of the broth has melted back down. Now we're just gonna strain out everything. 
So there we go, this is a lot of broth, probably enough for three or four batches of dumplings, but we're gonna pop this in the fridge. All right, so we'll come get this tomorrow when we go to make the dumplings. On to the filling, which is as classic as it gets, with the exception of the meat choice. I'm using some 93.7 lean ground beef from Frankie's Free Range Meat. Uh, we have ginger and scallions, the cooking wine that we used earlier, some toasted sesame oil, some coconut aminos, sugar, white pepper, and salt. Now, normally these two are not organic. You might have to go online to find them organic. And, and this would be soy sauce, not coconut aminos. So by going organic, by using soy sauce, we removed a lot of the negative chemical components of this meal and then things like the ginger, the scallions, sugar. Not as much of a concern to be organic, but we have that anyway. And the salt is available on Frankie's free range meat as well. So these scallions, I just chopped them real quick with a knife and then the ginger, I peeled it put it in the food processor and blitz it up because ginger is, it's pretty hard to cut this small. Now most recipes will put the pork in the food processor because the fat will emulsify it and make it like sticky and gummy, which is the perfect texture with soup dumplings. Since I have 93.7 ground beef and that's a little bit lean, uh, we're gonna put that in the food processor with some coconut oil and hopefully achieve a similar effect. So with this recipe, I'm making two pounds of filling. Uh, you could just cut it in half and make one because this is a bit excessive. Now, if you're using fattier meat, I don't think you're going to have to do this, but I'm going to squeeze in a bunch of coconut oil. Yeah, so after about 30 seconds in the food processor with the coconut oil, that lean ground beef has, has the texture we want. You see it's kind of like pasty and a little bit sticky. Probably not as sticky as pork, but this is... This is perfect. To our two pounds of beef, we are adding four tablespoons of the organic Chinese cooking wine, two tablespoons of coconut aminos, sweet, salty, two tablespoons of our ginger, four tablespoons of scallions, one tablespoon of salt, and then we want one teaspoon of the organic toasted sesame oil. And I did find regular sesame oil uh, at Whole Foods, but that does not have the right flavor. You need to use this. A bit of white pepper, now when they use pork, they put in one and a half teaspoons of sugar. And against my better judgment, I'm going to put that in here. But I have a feeling for beef, you don't want to add the extra sugar. Now we're just going to mix this up for maybe five or ten seconds. We don't want to puree it. We just want to incorporate everything together. All right. Not even three seconds. Should be fine. All right, we're gonna set this aside in the fridge and move on to the dough. Good news is that the dough is only two ingredients, flour and water. Here I have measured out 240 grams of organic all-purpose flour and 180 grams of glass bottles of mineral water. In the negative news, <laughs> the recipe said to add these one tablespoon at a time to this bowl and then knead it. So, oh man, this is, this is the part of the recipe I'm regretting because I don't have any patience. Now this to me seems ridiculous. We have some flour, some water, all right, you know what, we're not gonna, <laughs> I'm not Chinese, so I'm not following the Chinese rules. We're gonna see what happens if we just put all this together. I mean, the only reason I can assume you would add one tablespoon at a time is so that the flour hydrates with the water fairly evenly, but I mean, I don't, this looks fine to me. I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour on top so I can knead it. So if you rub, if I rub my hands together to get the dough off, you can clearly see it just gets more and more stuck to my hands. So that does not work. So we're kneading the dough, and when it gets like unbearably sticky and I can't really knead it anymore, I'm just adding a little bit of flour. Yeah, this is a, this is a nice amount of dough to work with. Just enslave your kids to uh, help you out one night. I'm assuming if you don't knead this, then when you roll this out pretty thin to make the dumpling, it's just going to fall apart in your hand. And to my understanding, you know, Chinese restaurants are known for working very hard. You know, having like 10, 15, 20 guys in the basement all to make soup dumplings for the day. So anytime you see a Chinese recipe, be prepared to spend half your day making it. Right, so I've been eating for about 15 minutes and then they say you're supposed to let this rest for 30 minutes. So I'll see you guys in half an hour. So we should be ready to make the soup dumplings. We have the aspic, the gelatin broth, our meat filling, our dough is all ready and I've made a ghetto steamer setup. So I took like a straining bowl, I put a plate in it and in this pot in the bottom I have a bunch of water and I'm just gonna cover it with a lid. It's not perfect, but we should be able to steam these just fine and you could get creative with this. You could put like 
a bowl upside down in the bottom, put a plate. I've seen people use aluminum foil, which uh, I don't think is that great. They like make aluminum foil balls, but just figure out some sort of steaming setup or you could actually buy a, a bamboo steamer and judging by the amount of effort to put into this recipe, if you're gonna do it, you might as well get one. Now we can't actually see if this is gelatin or not because all the fat has floated to the top. So I'm gonna go around the edge with a knife. Oh no, so this is, this is as perfect as it gets. Look at that. You guys see that? It's like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like pressing, I'm bouncing off of it. Like if you jumped into a pool of this stuff, you would bounce off of it. It's like rubber. And the reason we needed a gelatin broth so badly is because how do you get soup into a dumpling? You don't. You put this in the dumpling and when you cook it, it melts into soup. This is definitely overkill on the collagen content. Now some recipes will combine this with this. They'll mix it together and put it in the dough. Other recipes actually do it separate. So they'll put the filling in the dough first and then they'll put this in. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Now this is the main thing I was worried about, the level of skill it takes to make these. And I would say out of all the components of this recipe, this is, this is definitely, you know, the hardest thing. So every time I've seen someone make these, they roll out like a snake. And this is done in, uh, with pasta in Italy too. I mean, this isn't perfect, but it's fine for what we're doing. So now you want to cut these evenly. So I'm going to do, I forgot what the recipe said. I think maybe, I don't know, I'll just go with this. So. We'll do this. We can take it, slide it over, and then make sure they're the same size. I mean, you don't have to do that. You could just eyeball it, but for consistency, it's nice. You can just take one and go over, take one and go over and put that back now. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not gonna pretend I'm an expert on doing this. So definitely go watch some videos on how to make soup dumplings and, and see if you're any better at it than me. I've never been that, you know, good with my hands. So like, uh, if I was, I'd be doing like marble sculptures or some type of construction work but so over the past 10 minutes I've gotten slightly better at making dumplings I will share what I've learned so you want the initial shape before you roll it out to be uh, circular so that when you roll it out you only have to do two motions up down flip it the other way and then go up down again and then you should have a relatively circular dumpling dough and then if, if you feel any spots are a little thicker on the edges you can just stretch it out a little bit I haven't had a problem with putting too much filling in here yet. However, I will say some of those are thinner than others. So when we cook them, if none of them fall apart, then we know for sure you can go thinner on all of them. I don't know, I made enough filling and soup for like a thousand dumplings. I like leaving it on the counter and then I'll take up one side and instead of going like outside, like folding it outside, I fold it on the inside. So fold it on the inside, fold it on the inside, Fold it on the inside, 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 and then eventually you're all the way around and I give it a nice little twist. And I mean, I mean, guys, come on, I'm Italian. I'm, I can't, I mean, I'm not making soup dumplings, but it's better than before. So while I was finishing making those dumplings, I did a test batch and they stuck to the plate. Now I wish I, did one dumpling test instead of five dumplings, but whatever. So hopefully if I put some coconut oil on the plate, these won't stick the second time. While that's warming up, we're going to make the traditional dipping sauce, which is typically just vinegar and ginger, but I'm gonna add a couple of other things to make it a little special, maybe for the worse, because we already have a lot of flavorings in here. So all you really need is acidity. Technically there shouldn't be any need to add more than vinegar to these dumplings. So we have maybe, you know, half a cup of our rice vinegar. We'll put in some ginger, put in some scallions, and we'll put in just a dash of coconut aminos, a pinch of salt, a tiny, tiny bit of sesame oil, maybe like one or two drops. So classic is just without the sesame oil and aminos, but there we have it. Now I really wish I bought a bamboo steamer because I'm not liking the way this looks, but we don't really have a choice. Yeah, I mean, th these are even sticking to the, the plate that they're resting in, so the main concern is if these stick on the bottom, the bottom part of the dumpling will open up and we will lose all the soup. 
Now I'm not really sure how long to steam these because I didn't think I would get this far, but I'm assuming it's no more than five minutes. A few minutes. It doesn't look like these leaked because that's just the coconut oil, so there's too many dumpling casualties. All right, this one might actually be okay. All right, this one is okay too. All right, that one's okay too. A couple more dumplings. I'm just like rubbing the bottom in the oil. And yeah, the only thing I have to say is when you make these, make absolutely sure they're as sealed as possible because it's gonna be rough getting them out. Well, between my Chinese impersonation and dumpling making skills, I think my social credit score has lowered drastically. Uh, but let's see if we can make up for it in the flavor of these dumplings. Now, traditionally, you're supposed to like take them with chopsticks and dip them in this. But <laughs> if you guys think I can use chopsticks, you're a bunch of comedians. So what I'm going to do is I have these three dumplings in this bowl here. I'm just going to spoon some of, of this over it, maybe like just a little bit. I'm assuming this is like super hot inside and I shouldn't take a bite into it. That is like exactly what I was thinking about when I wanted to make these. You bite into it, you have this nice like plain dumpling wrapper, but just all of the seasoning of it, the ginger, the vinegar, it's really nice. And then as it breaks open, you get that little burst of warm soup and the, the super seasoned flavor of the filling. I'm incredibly happy with how these turned out. They're delicious. The only uh, problem is my dumpling making skills. So the dough's a little thick, especially on the top. So what you could do is after you like scrunch the dumpling together, if you're not that good at it, like me, maybe just rip a bit off the top so it's a bit more thin throughout. Insanely, insanely delicious. Very good. And the ingredients I've used when making these, I've kept in mind, it's like something I can eat that's okay for my liver. So I'm kind of happy. There's a lot of work involved, but I could see myself having this maybe the next time I feel like losing my mind making these. So if you're missing Chinese food, if you want to make dumplings, whether it's like boiled or pan fried, definitely try this filling as well as gelatin recipe. Amazing, delicious. Um, I'm not going to post the recipe below, but... You know, you guys can watch throughout this video and take notes if you actually do want to make these. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank com to support me through all of my businesses. We have the, the beef and the salt on Frankie's Free Range Meat and all of the other stuff. You know, I wear my Wi-Fi shield and clothing all the time. Just check them all out, frank and maybe eventually I'll be able to afford to hire someone to make a cookbook out of all of my YouTube videos. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, oh no, my, my social credit score now, it's, it's the highest in China. So I'm expecting them to send, you know, some very attractive Chinese people my way on a private jet fairly soon. Hey, I can pick them up from the airport in my used Honda CRV.